Hi everyone and welcome to the tour of Artist Room 2 in the other Art Fair Global Virtual Edition. Uh, my name is Anuka and I'm the Fair Manager for the London Fairs and we're so excited to have launched the fair yesterday and introduce all of our amazing artists and art loving buyers to this new virtual world. So today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of Artist Room 2 introducing you to some highlight artists along the way. We're currently in our entrance area, which if you've ever been to one of our real life events, looks just like we're standing at the front desk, complete with a Bombay Sapphire bar to pick up your drink along the way. So let's enter into room number two. So in this room, you can find 22 of our fair artists. We've broken the artist list down into three different artist rooms to make it a bit more bite-sized for you. All three rooms will be open at the same time on Saturday and Sunday. So make sure that you return on the weekend to see them all together. Uh, artist room three will be open tomorrow. So make sure you come back and check it out as well. Alongside the exhibiting artists, some other highlights include the Saatchi Art Stand in the Artist Room 2 and also the Society 6 Stand, which both feature curated collections of new artists. The Society 6 Stand is great, it features a collection of female illustrators. So if you haven't already been into the fair, you can navigate around using your mouse or your arrow keys, or you can jump straight to an artist stand using this list here on the right. So first off, I'd like to jump to Marcelina Amelia's stand, who's actually right here by the entrance. We, um, if, just check out the Meet the Others videos on the side of the stands as well. All of the artists have created these videos just to tell you a little bit more about themselves and their work. And also check out the features down at the bottom. We have the Let's Chat feature, so you can book a one-on-one -on -one video consultation with all of our artists if you want to find out anything more about their work. Or we also have the guest book feature where you can leave an email for the artist as well if you want to ask any questions. Um, so yeah, first I'd like to invite Marcelina along if she can come and join the chat. And we're going to just speak a little bit about all of her work on her stand. Hi Marcelina. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. So Marcelina has done a lot of our fairs in the past in both London and the US. So we're really excited to have you as part of the virtual edition. Um, so yeah, we, your work does explore a range of themes. So we, I know we'll kind of get into that while we're walking around the stand, but it would be great to kind of start with these artworks on your left hand side wall. So I'm just going to zoom in and we can talk about a couple of these prints. So take it away. Okay, so uh, here we have two of my limited edition prints. So they are archival prints on hand decoded Somerset paper. Mm. And both of them, they are hand finished. So for example, I only want everything is hand finished with acrylic paint and the bleeding cowboy with oil pastel. Nice. And I can tell you a little story behind each one yeah, of them. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, definitely, please. So my newest print is actually the bleeding cowboy on the right. Oh, I'm just gonna um, have a closer look. Cool. So this one was inspired by my impressions of a book by Chris Krause uh, titled I Love Dick and also a menstrual movement, which hides a variety of ways uh, to represent menstruation in art mm -hmm. and relationship between um, menstrual cycles and like cycles that occur in nature. Mm -hmm. um, also this piece for me is representing female strength Great. Yeah. yeah. So, and the other one, I only want everything, mm -hmm. is is a little bit older. Yes, please. Um, I love the and, title. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and this one is is basically it's it's a journey of like self discovery, 
like questioning this fast paced uh, performative world we live in right now. Mm -hmm. uh, like overloaded with information and like ideas of exceptionalism and how sometimes, especially for younger people, it is easier to, to be like lost in the stream than to be their own like person. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, so this one actually started this whole series of paintings mm. and each one of them in the series is, is like representing a different emotional state. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's also like a nod to a uh, woman wanting and deserving like everything and more in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Basically. which we can all kind of resonate with, I think, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So I'm just going to swing around to this back wall. I love these artworks, um, personally. There's three larger paintings that Marceline has included here on her virtual stand. Uh, I really particularly love the palettes. I find the neutral shades and they're all quite natural. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about them as a series or any individually? Well, actually, uh, I could talk about the one in the middle. Yeah, I think it's quite important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, because this one, well, they all are acrylic paints, acrylic paintings on canvas. Okay, and good. this one was inspired by um, my memories of, they're quite cloudy, obviously, but by memories of my upbringing in mm -hmm. Poland and Slavic witchery and superstitions and proverbs. And mm -hmm. it's quite surprising, but uh, people in Poland are still very superstitious mm -hmm. and it's a very Catholic country. So that doesn't even make much sense, but mm -hmm. superstitions are so, still like quite common and diverse here. Mm -hmm. um, and this piece is for me, it was like a talisman for, I guess, personal healing and also for like artistic inspiration. Mm -hmm. And the figure, as you can see, the figure holds an egg, which was mm -hmm. actually um, placed underneath my cot when I was a baby. Oh, really? and, yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and on the That's other side, uh, there is a red ribbon. Um, you probably can't see it here, but there is a red oh, ribbon yeah. around the flower. Right. Yeah, it's draped mm -hmm. over one of the lilies in the vase. Mm -hmm. And basically what, what it was meant to do, both of them, um, uh, drive away an evil spirit and any bad luck charms from the baby, from the newborn. Oh. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. I love the kind of themes of like female and like the everything surrounding it. But I think one of the, your most recent themes is kind of uh, motherhood and like raising children, I know, which I think we'll probably talk about. But that's really interesting to hear that your own childhood has been brought into your paintings as well. I love that. That's really, really cool. Thank you. Um, for those of you who haven't used the fair already, I'm just going to show you, you can, um, you can click on this information section right next to the artwork. So you can see a little bit more information about all of the artworks that the artists have left. And also to buy the artwork, you can click on buy this artwork link and it takes you to Saatchi Art to purchase the artwork too. Thanks, so we're just gonna zoom out of this wall and then shall we go to the series of work that you have here on the right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, here, I have, it's actually, it's actually a collection, it's an ongoing collection of uh, mixed media works on paper, mm -hmm. so uh, they are quite layered, um, so the way, the way I create them, I usually start with watercolor mm -hmm. as a base, and then I build up with like acrylic paint, and I usually finish it off with an oil pastel, so oh. they quite textured in real mm -hmm. life. You can't see it here yeah, as much, yeah. um, mm -hmm. but they have a lot of detail and texture mm -hmm. if you look up close. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so I, I like to call them my visual essays. 
mm -hmm. as each one of them tells a different story. But as a collection, they are like intimate records of a very turbulent and transformative time. I think both personally and mm -hmm. very much globally, I think. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, so I think I think those stories are quite universal in a way. And my aim is always connecting with people. So mm -hmm. hopefully, hopefully they do do that. Yeah, and definitely. Hopefully yeah. other people can find like their their own moods and their own like emotions in some of those uh, paintings. Um, yeah. And were they all made kind of in the last year during this kind of pandemic lockdown? I know that different countries and different areas have experienced various versions of lockdown, but yeah, you're right. The message is universal kind of in the end. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They were made during this this period of time, so like the end of 2019 till now. Mm -hmm. So like all of the things that were happening, like the pandemic, the lockdown, and like mm -hmm. my own journey into motherhood mm -hmm. and things like so the year started with like my road trips to LA and then mm -hmm. like women's right marches in Poland that were quite important to me. And then like months of complete isolation and stillness. So there is like, there was so much happening. Yeah. And I, I was trying to tackle all of those moods and emotions in, in, in this series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And are you planning on making any more or is it kind of an yes. ongoing thing? Yes, actually, actually my, my goal, my idea was to make uh, like a little self-published book oh, um, wow. kind of recording this this whole period of time so I was making a lot of sketches and there are so many more little stories that I want to transform into those kind of like little paintings on paper mm -hmm. so I think I'm just starting like this is just the beginning oh, so okay. hopefully yeah hopefully there will be loads more to come that's so cool yeah, I love uh, I love the scale of your work. I love that you can do kind of larger pieces and smaller pieces, and all of them are just kind of jam packed with with everything. It's really really special. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So um, so that's great. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave your stand there, and then we'll invite you on back at the end just for any Q and A. Um, thank but thank you so much. That was really really lovely. Thank you so much. Thanks. See you in a bit. So if anyone does have any questions about any of the artists or the artworks, just pop them in the chat or the Q&A section of the Zoom um, and we can get around to them at the end. We'll have a little Q&A section where we'll um, say goodbye to the artists and yeah, hopefully answer any of your questions if you do have any. So next I'm going to jump to Jerry Buxton's stand. So we'll just zoom through the thing. Yeah, so Jerry has been exhibiting at all of our real life events all over the world for quite a long time now. I think longer than I've actually been at the fair. So he's exhibited in London, Brooklyn and LA and now the virtual edition. So we're really excited to have you on board, of course. Hi, Jerry. Hi, <laughs> so you have such a unique style um, and yeah, we're really excited to have you on board. So it would be great if you could kind of talk through some of your works. I'll just spin around so that everyone can see your stand. As you can see, there's kind of three different main different types of work on your stand here. So it would be great if we could start with these ones, the smaller ones here on the left hand side. And I know this is kind of a basic question, but it is very interesting when it comes to your work. But um, can you tell us a little bit about the process and behind how how these kind of works are made. Yeah, so, so I'm a photographer, illustrator and printmaker. Mm -hmm. uh, so the images themselves all start as my original photographs. Um, but I think what's, what's really interesting about these is, is the process. Mm -hmm. So I'm a screen printer. Uh, and what really appeals to me about screen printing is the versatility of the discipline. Uh, screen printing is, is a really, really wide arc. You know, it goes from fine art editioning that we're all familiar with through to sort of uh, homewares and textiles, wallpapers, and then it goes on into uh, more industrial applications, so principal glass, metal, 
Um, so what I've been trying to do for the last couple of years is bring elements of industrial printmaking and bringing that into a fine art setting. Um, so this is from a series of work from 2019, where I did a series of editions uh, which are printed on glass and metal. Uh, so maybe if we could zoom in to the one in the middle, please. Yeah, of course. So this piece uh, is Manhattan View number one. So this is a photograph uh, actually taken from Dumbo in Brooklyn, looking back at the, at the Empire State Building. Uh, so for the piece here, uh, the cloudscape at the back of the piece is printed on a sheet of aluminium. Uh, and then about an inch in front of that, there's a, a sheet of glass. And onto that is printed the Empire State Building and a couple of the other buildings that you can see there. And then at the, at the front of these, of the first pane of glass, uh, these kind of housing projects, which are right on the, on the edge of the river again. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the effect that you get here uh, is that as you move around the piece, the you know, details at the back of it are kind of hidden and revealed. And it sort of, it, it recreates that sense of movement in the city. Yeah, that's amazing. I know it's really interesting to hear. I know that kind of on the face of it, screen printing, for some people might seem like it's kind of a confusing um, medium, but when you kind of lay it out, it's just, it's so interesting. And it's so layered and kind of detailed. I love it. Yeah, it's all, it's all about layers. I think it's um, I think it's kind of quite superficially simple. I always say that the screen printing should be easy. You know, if it's hard, you're not doing right. But it can be really, really hard to make it easy. Uh, yeah. You know, I've gone through so for all of the different kind of substrates that I've printed on, I've gone through lots of experimentation and small scale things until I've kind of uh, worked out exactly how to how to print them. I did a, a series of pieces a couple of years ago, screen printed directly onto the screens of old iPhones. And it, it eventually, it was really easy to print them, but it took me about six months to work out exactly how that was, you know, how to make it easy. Oh my gosh, it's a science, a science and an art. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, so I love that there's kind of like that you've got these kind of these different cities that kind of feel so far away, especially this year. There's a really, there's a massive sense of kind of nostalgia for travel. Um, and you kind of mentioned that a lot of your works comes come from photographs. So do you, with all of your works, do you travel to the places, you take the photos, you do the research? Is that how it works or do you kind of... That's, yeah, that's yeah. right. I, yeah, I've been, been very lucky in the, you know, before, in the old world when we were still able to travel. Uh, yeah. I was very lucky to travel pretty widely. Um, and actually the, the New York photographs were taken uh, on the first time I came out to New York for the North Fair. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a there's another piece. So if we actually scan over to the piece to the right, so this is a piece to print to Manhattan View number one. This is, as you might guess, Manhattan View number two. <laughs> but, but this shot uh, is actually from Greenpoint, so just walking distance from the fair uh, yeah. at the Expo Center. So just on the jetty where the, where the ferries leave from. Mm -hmm. uh, and similar kind of vibe with this one, um, but actually the sense of depth on this one is, is perhaps more exaggerated. Um, the cloudscape, but also the Met Life and Comcast building are on the mm -hmm. sheets at the back, mm -hmm. and then the Kaiser and a couple of other buildings in that middle sheet. So it really, really exaggerates that that sense of depth with them. They're kind of, and, and the other thing with that is, you know, once the prints is done, it's nearly two and a half, nearly three inches deep. So it's a really kind of chunky, solid. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. there's, there's an element of sculptural in that piece as well. You know, it's, it's not yeah. just a kind of flat, uh, mm -hmm. you know, two dimensional work. That's really cool. And it kind of is so reminiscent of New York, like just layers upon layers of buildings and, you know, yeah, just the whole massive concrete environment. That's it. And I think there's a whole thing about the, the sort of the hidden glimpses of buildings you get in between buildings. Yeah. And particularly with those two, you know, with the Empire State and the Chrysler, you, you see them so often from, from both Manhattan and Brooklyn, but there's always a different view on them. They're always kind of revealing something different. And I think there's a real element of that in these pieces as you interact with around them, uh, you know, they, they change. Also, you know, of course, as the, as the light in the room changes, as you get direct sunlight on, it's electric light, they'll cast different shadows from the print onto the, onto the back of the box. Yeah, of course. That's super cool. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, everyone can be able to see them in person soon, because I know that kind of, it's just like the effect is just amazing. So that's really cool. Um, I'm going to swing around to your runway in pieces that are here on your back wall, if you just bear with me. So speaking of travel, this is kind of reminiscent of days well, gone by and well, this is it, 
And actually, I think having the planes grounded on the runway is, is, is perhaps very uh, appreciated. Yeah, that's uh, true. Um, so this is, this is a series of work which I'm launching for the, for the fair this weekend. Um, so the, the illustrations were commissioned by American Airlines for their offices and lounge at Heathrow. Uh, so I've produced the illustrations in an edition three. So number one of each is now hanging in the, in the airport. And there's a couple left in edition which I'm launching yeah, exclusively through the fair. Okay. So, so to the start of the commission, I was really, really fortunate to be granted access to the runway uh, to get in and take the photographs. And then as part of that, uh, I was able to, we went out to see where the jets were parked up to be cleaned before they're taken back to the gate. Uh, and as luck would have it, one was ready to, to come back to the gate. So we were able to ride in the cockpit with the jet. That's so cool. So all, all the images you see here are, are from the pilot side, you know, cockpit to cockpit. So you really kind of, you know, eyeball to eyeball with the other jets. Yeah. Um, and I think it, it, it really gives a great sense of the scale of the runway. Uh, I think particularly the piece in the bottom right, number four, uh, where you've got a couple of people uh, in the foreground who are kind of working with the, with oh, the yeah. plane as it's, it's towed in. You realise just how massive these, these jets are. Mm -hmm. um, now, you, you'll notice with these that there's a, they're printed on a wooden background. Mm -hmm. So this is an OSV, or Orientated Strand Board. So okay. you'll most kind of commonly see that kind of hoardings outside building sites or uh, you know it's a structural material so i had i had a few sort of offcuts of this sitting in the studio which i've been i like, thinking about how to print for a long time and they happened to be old shelves so they were in this kind of massive widescreen format and then as i was working on the illustrations it occurred to me that this was the perfect format to kind of really describe and take you to the runway and give you that sense of the you know the, of the scale here Mm -hmm. um, now, now printing on these was, was not easy. This this took a while. <laughs> and, and I a small scale for testing. So they're uh, so they're cut into big sheets first, and then I've applied an epoxy resin coat on top, mm -hmm. and then I've printed on top of the resin, and then finally I put another coat of resin on top to finish them. Um, now I'm based the resin, on the resin it, gives them that really like smooth shiny finish it gives them that absolutely beautiful kind of glossy glossy finish but also helps to protect the print yeah. um now, so i'm i'm based in south east london i'm at a studio block called um, thames side studios okay. and we've got uh, it's a huge huge development and there's lots and lots of different people down here and it's everything from fine art to fashion to furniture making to, to all sorts of stuff now so for these pieces i actually was able to collaborate with the furniture maker and in, in producing the final pieces. So they were printed on great big sheets and we then had them uh, lists of um, CNC, computer numerically controlled cut from, from that sheet. It's then backed onto a subframe uh, and then there's a, like a white laminate edge around. It. So it's, it's it, wow. again, like with, with the glass prints, it's bringing industrial into the fine art. This is also taking another discipline. Um, and because of the curved edge, that we're not able to really show the depth of them. Yeah. But I'd invite anyone to click through and look at the pictures on Sachi, and then you really get a sense of just yeah. how chunky and, and deep they are. And you can you to see them hanging in the, in the back of the line. I'll click through to Sachi Art now, and maybe we can have a look. Yes, yeah, so if we come through there, and then I think the first shot is kind of cropped right in. But yeah, if you see these ones, yeah, that gives you a real sense of the, the way Yeah, so they're the, like the, solid, chunky. Yeah, really, really kind of chunky. They're about four foot wide. And then actually, mm. if you scroll down to the picture from the of the reverse, so the second, that's the one. So wow. you see, so all of the details, so the addition, you know, the title, the edition number, the date, is all actually etched into the back of the frame. And then mm. the pictures on the, on the bare wood. Amazing. So there's, there's, there's lots and lots of different things that kind of come together to, to make these pieces. And really, yeah. it, 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 in a funny way, it was the lockdown of last year that really allowed me to, to dedicate the time to really kind of push them through. Because, you know, in, in a normal year with the pressure of the fairs every six months, and, and yeah. you, you, I, I wouldn't have had the time to, to put into them. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, it's really, really been worthwhile. I'm very, very, very happy with how these have come out. Oh, that's really good to hear. Yeah, I feel like even though obviously it made everyone stand still, it gave everyone a chance to kind of take stock and also dedicate some time. And that's really interesting to hear. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, as I said, Jerry's work 
is incredibly unique. So I've loved really hearing about it. And I just love the kind of the whole process that goes into it. And I feel like when you, that's kind of the best part about meeting you at the fair, you get to kind of get a really good sense of how you make all of the work. So it's been really nice being able to get a chance to hear a bit about it here. So thank you so much. I am, yeah, for, for the duration of the fair, I've, I've taken one of the empty studios down here. So I've oh, got yeah, of course. all of the work here hanging in a real gallery setting. So yeah, I would invite anyone to click the one-to-one -one button and book a video chat. I'd be, um, yeah, be really happy to share it with everyone. Yeah, definitely. So you can book a video chat with Jerry um, on the little icon and stand just here. And you can find out more. Thank you so much, Jerry, and we'll see you at the end for the Q&A section. Perfect. Thanks, Anuka. And see you later. <laughs> Wow. Okay, great. So uh, finally, we're going to head over to Christiana Williams's stand. So again, hi, Christiana. Hi. <laughs> so Christiana is uh, also kind of an old favorite at the fair. She's done lots of editions in London, but also in LA and Dallas. Um, her work is super recognizable as well. We've had three amazing artists with really, really unique styles. So we've been, like had a real treat today. But you might recognize Christiana's work from some of the partnerships that she's done with the VNA, uh, Penn Halligans, and also the Coldplay uh, album cover for A Head Full of Dreams, which I love as well. So um, it's really great to have you at the virtual fair too. Thank you. I was just <laughs> thinking, it's actually just so nice to hear from Marcelina and Jerry, oh. and actually realize what you miss so much about the fair is. Coming and seeing how everybody's doing and yeah. that's like sometimes the best thing about the fair you can see how everybody's developed and what they're working on and now this yeah. is such a great period so yeah I really and also realized how much I missed it by yeah. hearing them talk <laughs> <laughs> and just how like how things change over time like I think there's been such a massive gap between when we've all seen each other so I think yeah next time when we do see each other again It'll, it'll be a massive change. Yes, I think so, and it'll just be really good to be back. Good, yeah. So um, with your work especially as well, just like I asked Jerry, I know this is probably one of the most basic questions, but your work is so incredibly detailed and is kind of all about the process in part. So I'd like to kind of talk the audience through yes. some of your processes and then we'll we'll focus on a few of your pieces so i'm just going to zoom into this yes, i was thinking actually if we could start yeah. with the skeletons this is the three-dimensional one skeletons yeah um, of course but i just thought i was just listening to the other guys and i was actually thinking because those two that three that we ones over here about escapism but i was just thinking i actually created the skeletons a little bit uh, i'll tell you first the or how I make it. So yeah, I am essentially a collage artist. So I use Victorian engravings and Victorian engravings are essentially how they would document nature, press, animals, uh, products before they had photography. So the engraving library of the world from like the late 1800s is absolutely vast. So I will use both like the engravings and um, I will buy old photographs, so I'll go to all the old markets or work with antique dealers to get like maps or like anatomical drawings. So mm. it's very, um, the process goes both in and out. So is uh, the research, I think is number one, two and three, depending on where I start with a brief. So for an example, uh, working with Alice in Wonderland in the Victorian Albert Museum now, which is an incredible brief, but obviously with Lewis Carroll and that history and the mood board, yeah. it's just everything is like there handed on this incredible plate because you're working with these amazing curators. Um, so that's amazing. And also working like with Penn Halligans, that has so much history. Mm. That's what I kind of dive into and feed on. And a lot of my pieces like with London, they are often me researching into the history, coming from mm -hmm. Iceland, being kind of quite, I think I'm um, learning throughout my art and being quite a dyslexic child. I think it's just 
visualizing everything and mm -hmm. focusing on it and adding like my fantasy and dreams into it and also inviting people to go on their own journey through it um, yeah. is kind of how I work. So for an example, imagine like this uh, botan uh, botanical explorer has created all these engravings. So Vichy will take one of those, they'll cut them out, scan them out, cut them out um, and take them into Photoshop, clean them up, color them. And then what the magic that you can do there is that you can really work with scale. Mm -hmm. and after I've done that, it gets printed, it comes out again, and then it's hand cut. And some of the pieces remain uh, limited at this edition mm -hmm. prints like these two are. But then a lot of the original pieces also go through that front process. But where it goes into um, 3D pinning, where it becomes like more of a sculptural piece is just all of these hand cut pieces to paper. I use entomology pins, which are the same as um, entomologists would use to pin bugs and butterflies and stuff. So oh, amazing. Uh, yes, but I was just thinking about these two pieces because yeah. they were made, they were initially about like travel and anxiety and the emotions yeah. that you have when you're leading into things that kind of you're looking forward to. So like the walking on clouds, like the bristle that you get between your shoulder blades and mm -hmm. like all kind of the drinks and the travel. And so it's, um, so these two were uh, about that kind of wishful thinking and dreaming and anticipation. And I don't know, I feel like looking back at these, they feel like very adapt for this time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then the two pieces on the right, the circular pieces, um, mm -hmm. Oh, the neon, the neon world. So that yeah. was just me obsessing about the black sea phosphorescence. And, you know, when you have the glitters in the sky or in the water. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Got all the neon creatures of the world, like when it naturally gives that light. Mm -hmm. That one, you could really see that in the original pieces, which all had silver leaf in them. Amazing. Um, but the two pieces on the <clears throat> right are probably very kind of typical of, I think if you look at yeah, the other one you're pointing at now, yeah, this round one. is um, by a wonderful cartographer, Mark. He's done, uh, this is London in the central, so there's 24 miles around London. Mm -hmm. You've got the Royal Albert mm -hmm. Hall, St. Paul's, you've got the London Eye, Nelson Col Column, and mm -hmm. E.T. Tower then you kind of you have to really kind of click on it to be able to see the details of like who's carrying the balloons and all is there the more details on your search yeah yes yeah, so um a lot of them, the them have a lot of like historical curiosities which i've kind of put into um visual art form which is yeah just, i like to learn history so <laughs> so it's quite yeah, I was gonna um, say I think I was going to say if like with your artworks, it's the type of thing that you could you could own forever and you would still find bits that you wouldn't see kind of every single day, which is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I really enjoy it. And this one, the one above is um, from visiting Sri Lanka in the Indian Ocean and just that whole area again. So that's about everything from the tea plantation to the natural life, mm -hmm. to the mountains, to the tuskless elephants. Um, so again, like the plants, the flora and fauna. So as I take my work from some of the original botanists that have gone to explore and document the things that I think in a way it's, it's like a more of my interpretation of it. Yeah makes sense <laughs> yeah definitely and it's kind of like just like with jerry's piece it's very kind of nostalgic about travel and reminiscent of times gone by in so many different ways yes exactly. i love that so the the tree is kind of constant it's, it's something that keeps cropping up again and again when i grew up in iceland yeah like they've really planted a lot of trees since but like the vikings came in and they just like used it all to build the boats and the trees and like Iceland just had no trees just had the lava field. That's interesting yeah. When I was growing up we had this 
joke in Iceland is like, what do you do if you get lost in an Icelandic forest? You stand up. And <laughs> we thought that was the most hilarious things. But actually, Iceland is so amazing. They've like they planted so many trees and stuff. But that was <laughs> like so something, a lot of it is like though I have been in London for a long time, but like I did spend a lot of my youth like really wanting to be in a tropical rainforest where there was just like all of these exciting animals. And I was just quite disappointed that like that wasn't in Iceland. So yeah. I think a lot of it is just kind of that adventurous eye geography art, which is like always where my mind traveled. So yeah. this, dark, this is the first kind of tree that I'm actually, it does have this dark kind of black and white background. So you have like the frozen over Icelandic sea and the black sand and then kind of all the art adventure and narrative kind of coming on top of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's still like, because it's funny, I've been now more in England than in Iceland. So oh, wow, left yeah. Iceland when I was 20 and I'm 45 now. Mm -hmm. so it's just been so like, it's funny, even looking at Iceland now, it's just like, of course, as you grow up, you see the beauty and the amazingness of where, you know, the colors, you have a completely different appreciation, but um, it's still, yeah. I've been so long away. So I still think I have a slightly like this, that basic foundation, but anyways, I'm, I'm yeah, doing definitely. work with Iceland. So I'm looking forward to some more Icelandic work coming up. Yeah. No, I can, I totally understand. I think uh, you kind of, when you're younger, you always want what you don't have and yeah. you kind of dream of faraway places. And then when you finally get there, it's like, oh, you yeah. kind of return home. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. Cool. Did you want to um, focus on any more of your artworks before we wrap up? Um, maybe just a quick look at the two dioramas. Um, yeah. Then it's quite enjoyable so yeah so the two the one they the, up here is this on this wall here they're up there so for an example the tree and the large world map piece is like it's about this okay. wide in a glass frame sorry the one that we were looking at and that's oh. dimensionally pinned and sculptured whereas the dioramas these here are set within a six layered um kind of glass Mm -hmm. sections so you can look into it so it's again from that time of Victorian and Great where they didn't have movies or cinemas and like all of these kind of peek throughs so uh, working with the VNA again 2011 I did um, interactive exhibition with them and and I was in the British galleries which was just had all mm. the dioramas and the looking pieces so they they always kind of feature also fascinated by architecture and color yeah 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 that's so cool you can see there's like you can see even from the pictures there's a massive kind of depth to them yes. and again there's so much going on that you wouldn't be able to kind of capture all in one yes <laughs> amazing yes cool well thank yes. you so much little details so i think yeah about them is best when you click on them and how long would one of these kind of take for you to put together it's really interesting, uh, like, because now that I have such a vast library, you know, probably like everyone mm -hmm. like, it's just germinating in your head, like half your ideas don't work out. Some just come like amazingly together yeah. and yeah. some are intensely laborious. So it, it really depends. Yeah. Some not that long and some like over a year. So it's like, ah. Oh. But... <laughs> and you obviously work on multiple pieces at once. Yeah, I work on a lot of pieces at once, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Cool. Well, yeah, like I said, um, if, if anyone does want to speak to Kashana a bit more about her work, you can book a one on one video consultation or drop her an email or obviously ask any questions in the chat now. Um, and we can get around to them because I feel like we've had a limited time with all of the artists, but we're gonna, um, yeah, there's so much more to find out. So um, I think now I think now we're towards the end, it would be great to bring everyone back on and I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we can just do a quick q and A. I can see there's a few questions in there. So I'm going to... Have you spoken to Sasha? Pardon? Have you spoken to Sasha? No, she's on the team, so we're not going to speak to her. Oh. <laughs> she's not an artist. <laughs> it's okay. So hi guys, thank you so much. <laughs> So I'm just going to open up the Q&A quickly. I can see a few in here. 
So questions for all artists. How did you find the process of making work during lockdown? Did you find it hard or easier to feel inspired and creative? I know this is probably slightly different for everyone, but it'd be interesting to know. Uh, should we start with you, Jerry? Uh, yeah, well, I think it was it was relatively easy actually. But the thing that was because I had the commission, which had for you know for planes, which had already started, so I had a piece of work to get into, and I was able to, to just get lost in that. Mm -hmm. um, and luckily enough, you know, the, the studio was still open, so I've still been able to get into work. So I've had this little kind of bubble, which is COVID-free, and I don't think about it or worry about it. And and actually, like you say, the the having the time to spend on the work has been has been really good. So I think it's, it's actually been quite a kind of quite a good time, uh, you know, okay. That's good to within know. the context of it. Yeah, <laughs> all things considered. <laughs> what about you, Christiana? Um, yes, I actually found it a really creative time and just being forced yeah. to kind of be in the calm. So, yeah, uh, I think probably more produced a lot of work. So it was really, it was really good. I, I like this. I do miss the art first and being around everywhere, but I also really love the piece. Yeah, so. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> and Marcelina, have you been inspired or how is it different? It was very different for me for many reasons. Um, I think it was quite challenging, but at the same time, I think interesting because art needs to be challenging. So there is obviously a lot of changes in my personal life and therefore that changed the themes of my work. Yeah. And uh, to be very honest, there was a little bit of a conflict how to tackle this new subject of motherhood mm -hmm. and that was not something I was used to seeing as much in the art world so there was quite a lot of research that I had to kind of take on to find out more about like portraying motherhood in art and find a bit more courage to share it with, mm -hmm. with everyone so interesting but challenging yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. wonderful work <laughs> I love your yeah, work. It's amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, we have three questions, one for each of you. So we'll just answer these ones quickly before we wrap up. Um, so we have Jerry, what is your favorite series that you've done? That must be fun. Oh, it's, it's hard to say, really. Um, it's, it, you know, in, in a funny way, it's always the next one. Yeah. That's uh, nice. It's the next one. I always feel. Uh, by the time I finished the series of work, I've, I've learned a lot from it, and I'm kind of really looking forward to applying that to, to the next series of work. Mm -hmm. um, so, as, as, as part of lockdown, I've been starting to work on a new series of stuff, prints of, of, of London, and particularly along the river, because the studio's right on the river. And if I walk in from the house, like a, a good stretch of the walk is, is along the Thames. So, that I find very inspiring, and that really has taken up most of my thoughts at the moment. So, it, it's the next one. Excellent. That's a good answer. <laughs> um, so Christiana, this was asked during our talk. So, have you always created your art in this style? How did you start with it? It's it's really distinctive. Uh, I actually started in screen printing, so oh, I was literally right. I was passion for screen printing. So everything was layered, and I just remembered when I like got into twelve screens, and it was just like a schmush. Of, <laughs> but um, it started uh, in screen printing, painting, um, and then got into the engravings. So, mm. yes. So it's developed over time. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. And then finally for Marcelina, um, is, who is the woman that you paint? Or are they self-portraits? Uh, this is the question I get a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah, I can um, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> And obviously, because the work comes through me, there is always an element of me in them, like yeah. the soul, the thoughts. But actually, I very rarely paint myself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's often my friends. Uh, sometimes I I just find someone that just fits kind of the setting that I want to express and I would just contact them and, and ask them to pose for me. So yeah, it's different people. It's not not me all the time. Yeah. But there are a few, I must admit recently I have created a few self-portraits. Mm -hmm. So there's one at the 
figure with cabbage breast that's uh, that's me yeah oh, really? and the one with with the baby is also me but everyone else in on display at the fair it's it would be either my friend or or a model someone i would uh can commission to sit for me Oh, cool. Yeah, that's actually a question I've always wanted to ask you, so I'm yeah. been able to answer that. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you three all so much. It's been really, really lovely to catch up with you and to see you again. Um, and you can see all of their work today in room two at the at the fair and then um, on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So if you do want to speak to any of these artists one on one, you can book a one to one video consultation, like I said, or you can yeah, reach out over email and follow them on Instagram and yeah, visit their Sarchi art profiles and just keep in touch with them because yeah, your work's all amazing. So it's really, really lovely to have you featured. And thank you so much. Nice thank to see you. you and see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.